So I can think about things that uh, you and I have talked about, for example, tuberculosis testing. Right. How might, because right now it is an ordeal to test for TB. Right. How has this transformed that process, and not just here, but worldwide? It's actually a great story. We um, actually goes back to the Mayo Clinic. So in 1994, I had a, a postdoc working on a test uh, for tuberculosis that would uh, go straight to sputum and amplify the drug resistance genes out of the sputum and say that it was TB and also that it was drug resistant. Mm. Uh, and when he wrote that paper up, he, um, in the discussion section, he said, you know, someday this tech technology may actually make it out to where it really counts, which is in places where drug-resistant TB is more common in Africa and other places. Um, and my comment back to him was, that's never going to happen. Wow. Uh, this, this, this technology is way too complicated, requires a four-room PCR facility and DNA sequencing. But I let him keep it in there, okay? And I'm so glad I did because I was wrong. Wow. Uh, I, I'm happy to be proven wrong that, in fact, that approach finally did make it in to this format that allows us to directly detect TB and drug resistance directly from sputum in about uh, an hour to an hour and a half. That's ridiculous. So not only, okay, let me just understand this in my very, very, very sad hospitalist brain. In an hour, based on a sputum sample, you can first of all diagnose TB is present, second mm -hmm. of all whether it is drug resistant TB yep. using this process. Yep. I think you said it when you said in the US, that's fantastic. Around the world, it's life saving, crucial, yep. yeah, transformative. Yep. And so are you deploying this or are you just oh, squirreling it all no, behind actually, the door somewhere? It's, um, it's received endorsement by the um, WHO. Uh, for implementation worldwide, recommended to be used in a variety of settings. It's led to the installation of over 18,000 systems, um, about half of which are used for TB testing. And that has led to worldwide uptake of that one test. So that one test has really allowed Cephe to become a global company more than any other uh, technology. So l l let me focus on that statement for a second because this is what I've been talking about with our ZPAC for a long time, which is you can do well financially, you've become a global company, you've grown mm -hmm. based on the science that you guys have developed. You can do well financially by doing good for human beings in the world, yep. which you have done. And it's that, that intersection that is what we call Health 3.0. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're really excited about this because tubercul. I mean, what what part of the? This is just a nerdy question. What part of the resistance element of TB are you amplifying to test? Is it a plasmid? What's carrying the resistance element in the DNA? Right. So it's actually a, a part of the genome that um, it, it encodes a polymerase, an RNA polymerase, that is the target of rifampicin. Mm. So rifampicin is a surrogate marker for multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. Um, if it's rifampicin resistant as a TB strain, it's more, much more likely to be resistant to other things as well. They kind of go hand in hand. Exactly. So right. um, it's a surrogate system for going down the pathway of using a very different treatment regimen for tuberculosis. Do you need a follow-up test if your test is positive? Do you need to confirm with anything? Do you need further testing for drug sensitivities, et cetera? That's uh, being uh, um, looked at right now, and Cephe is actually developing a cartridge for TB that looks for other drug resistance markers. That'll be available in 2020 as a follow-on to that test to see which uh, alternative treatment regimen is going to be most effective. Um, so, but that's the entry point right now. That's the one that says it's sensitive TB. You could use the usual regimen versus uh, you need uh, a second line regimen that involves a lot more um, drugs and um, greater toxicities. Um, we're trying to get away from injectable regimens right now mm. for drug resistant TB. 
uh, that's in the works. Mm. But ha knowing more about the drug resistance that you're dealing with is going to be part of our future as well. So it seems to me that that would open the door for things like Ebola, HIV, HCV, other infectious agent testing. Yeah, absolutely. So once you have the systems out there, and those systems can be used to run a variety of tests, not just TB. Mm. Um, it took a long time for us to convince the world that actually that box that you, that you installed for TB testing can be used for HIV, chlamydia gonorrhea, Ebola, other applications, and they can be run um, all at the same time if you need to. You can run them in, in, a, in a random access mode. And so what has essentially happened is we've now created laboratory capacity to run a whole uh, menu of tests. And in much of the TB infected or endemic world, um, HIV is also very common. So treating patients and diagnosing patients who have uh, HIV uh, for the presence of tuberculosis is very challenging.